time we put a transportation table for a fictional problem. We had five supply centers and we had seven demand centers. The first uh, idea for transportation simplex algorithm was just like any other uh, LP problem that we are dealing with, we need to start with a basic feasible solution. But in this case, the basic feasible solution was found very easily. The first method that we talked about it was the northwest corner. We start from the top and we keep assigning as much as we can. And what is holding us is this number or that number. How much I can supply from this center and how much demand is needed. The minimum of these two is going to be what I will select. In this case 40 was the supply and 20 was the demand. I assigned 20 in here. And as you assign one, you satisfy either a column or a row, you will erase it from the rest of the consideration. And you move on. In this case, we erase this column, we crossed out this column, and then went to the next column. At the same time, we updated how much supply was needed. So this is the process that you keep doing. Except when you reach a point in which both numbers in here and in here are the same. And the case was made right here. We got here and we had 60 in here and 60 available in here. So we assigned 60 in this location. When we assigned 60 in this location, both of them went to zero. The selection in this case is arbitrary. You either erase a row, eliminate a row, or eliminate a column but you don't do both of them at the same time. You keep one of them alive. In this case, this was kept alive with the value of zero. That was reached zero, so we eliminated the row and we moved to the next row. And in here was the minimum, assignment was the minimum of what I could assign here and what I had which of course was zero, so I assigned zero. The difference between this zero and this zero, because that value is zero. These are non-basic. Everything that has no number in it is a non-basic and that is zero. The difference between this is that this is basic and zero. This is non-basic automatically zero. This is zero based on calculation. This is zero automatic. So after we finish, after we come down, down here and we finish, we would write our solutions based on just simple coordinate, use the coordinate system. This is cell number one, one. This is cell number whatever it is, the row, the column. And you write those solutions and then to calculate the z. To calculate the z, multiply that number by the cost, that number by the cost, this number by the cost, and so on, and you get a z value for this solution. Now this is a basic feasible solution. This is a basic feasible solution. Making a basic feasible solution is very simple. But the z value in here is 2150. 
So this solution, northwest corner, starts you with a basic feasible solution. And from there, you can move on and implement the algorithm. We haven't talked about the algorithm yet, but there is an algorithm coming right after this. So this is the first one. But then you look at this and you say, well, maybe there is a better solution that I can start with. And getting that better solution to start with will be the fact that when we made this solution, the only thing that we didn't pay attention to was the cost. We looked at the supply and the demand, and that was the only thing that we were looking at, them, satisfying supply and demand. Well, I can satisfy supply and demand, but be smart about it and take a look at the cost as well. So in this solution, which is called the minimum cost method, so the minimum cost method is again a method for finding the basic feasible solution. So we are still going to find our basic feasible solution, but with a different approach. And this approach takes into consideration the costs this time. So I will start by looking at the whole picture in here, the whole tableau. I will look at the whole, everything that I have in here, and then look at the cost. And I said, well, it makes sense to assign values to the one that has the minimum cost. I will look down here and it looks like two is the minimum and one is minimum cost. So I said, well, I will assign as much as I can to this one, because that's the cheapest one. So I will look at 100 and I will look at 30 and I will assign 30 units to this. That is going to be zero and this is going to be 70. So this column is gone. I don't move to the next column or the previous column or anything else. I will look for the minimum cost again. I will look at the minimum cost. There is one, there's no more one in here, there is a two in here, there is a two in here. These are the twos. And I select arbitrarily between them. So we will select these two and we are going to assign as much as we can. That is 40, this is 80. I'm going to assign 40 units in here. 80, 40. That 80 will be updated to 40. This 40 will reach zero. So that row is eliminated. And then I will come down here and can I assign anything in here? Yeah. No, because this column was eliminated. That's why it makes sense to put that little line in here. So you would not consider that anymore. So it makes sense to do a little line like here. In the previous one, it's not that uh, important because you keep coming down like a step. You keep coming down until you get there. But in this case, you may go up, down, left, right all the time. So it's, it makes more sense to 
just draw a line or color the cells such that you don't get them mixed up. So the next number, which is the lowest cost, one is this, one is this already gone. So one is this. There is one three in here, but it is gone. Um, any other three? three, seven. three seven. X37 back here. So these two are unassigned and we can assign them. So we will select one of them. Let's select this one. There's a 20. There is a 30. So I will assign 20 here. And this will go to zero. That will go to 10. This went to 0, so this column will go out of consideration. The next 3 is here, and it is still available. So I'm going to assign that value. Between 70 and 40, I can assign 40. That will take that to 0, and this to 30. This column is no longer considered. So between the remaining of them, which is this portion and that, we will be looking and there is a 4 in here, there is a 4 in there. Both of them can be assigned. So let's assign to one of them. Let's pick that one. And there is a 10 available. There is a 30 available. So we will assign 10. That will go to 20. This will go to 0. And then this is out of consideration. There was another 4 in here. Selection between 30 and 40. Selection between 30 and 40 is 30. That will go to 0. This will go to 10. That's gone to 0, so this goes out of consideration. Notice that there is this, 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 that, and these two. Only thing available. So we will look at five. There is a five in here and there is a five there and both of them are available. So we will assign uh, five in here, 60 available, and 20. So we will assign 20. This column will go away. This will be 40. So everything that is remaining is here. There's a 5 in here. Between 10 and 70, I can assign 10. That causes this column to go away. And this becomes 60. And 5 is gone. 6. There's a 6 there. Oh, there's, a, there's a 6 there. There's an 8. There's a 9. And there's a 12. There's a 6 in here. Between 40 and 50, I can assign 40. This will go to 0. This will go to 10. That is gone. There are only two boxes remaining. 9. 10 is assigned here. That's 50.
that's zero, that is gone, and 50 goes here. Uh, in here? Okay. Now, those of you who are good with the calculator, find out what the solution is. And so this is northwest corner. This is uh, minimum cost. And in this case, the way that we write it is x2, x12, x12 equal 40, x23, x23 equals 40, x26 equals 20, x3, Two equals thirty x three five x three five equal thirty and x three seven equals forty x four two equals ten x four three equals ten x Four, four equals fifty. X five, one equals twenty, and X five, one equal twenty, and X five. 6 equals 10. And the z value will be calculated as something that we will report soon. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that we have 11 basic variables that we, we, are, we are required for the basic feasible solution. Now remember, last time if we didn't consider that zero or this zero, we would end up with less basic variable that we needed. So it's very important to know why we have that, that many basic variables. How many variables do, ha do we have in total? How many? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So we have five in here and seven in there. How many constraints would we have? We have five for this and seven for that. Remember the formulation that we did? We have five for the supplies. We have seven for the for the demands. So we have twelve constraints. Didn't we say that the number of constraints is equal to the number of basic variables that you have? We said that before. So how come in here we only have 11 basic variables. The reason is something that has to do with the B, the big B. Okay? The big B is supposed to be 12 by 12, but it is actually 11 by 11. Why is that the case? If you look at the formulation, I don't have the formulation in, but if you look at the formulation, you will notice that one of those constraints is not independent than the other. 
and that's very important to realize. One of the constraints, any one of them that you select, is not independent of the others. How come? Well, remember when I write this equation for this, I would say x11 plus x12 plus x13 plus x14 da 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 da, da equals 40. And for the other one, for the second one, I would say the x21, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 3, and, and so on equals 60. Well, when I write all of them together and add them up, what would I get at the right-hand side? On the left-hand side, I will have all variables. Seven variables here, seven variables here, seven, 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 all variables. So I would have 35 variables equal to what when I add them up? On the right hand side, I will have equal 300. That's the total number of those. When I add them up, I would write five set of equations, E1, first one equal 40, second one equal 60, and so on. And when I add them up, I would get what? 300. So far, so good. Then I'll start doing this. I'll add that, I'll add that, I'll add that, I'll add that. When I add all of them up, what would I get? 300. When I add them up, I will get 300. So for this last one, for example, any one of them can be just like this. For this last one, when I write this, do I know what the answer is? Yes. It's 300 minus this summation. That is 300 that I have in there minus this summation. How would I get the equations for this? Subtract everything that you have on the rows from everything that you have from the columns up to here, and you get that last equation. So one of these constraints is not independent than the rest of them, and that's because we have a balance problem. The summation of this and the summation of that are equal. So you always have in transportation problem one minus m plus n, m, m plus n minus 1. So if you have m in here and n in here, 5 plus 7 minus 1 is the number of basic variables that you have. Always count to see whether you have more or less if you get a tableau like this, the first thing that you do is, first of all, make sure that these are correct, 40, 40, 40 plus 20, 60, 30 plus 30 plus 70 equal 100. Check those rows and the columns. And then count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11. 5, 12, minus 1, 11. So this is the correct, everything so far is correct, and this is a basic feasible solution. Anybody had the number for me and Z? 15, 30. I'm sorry? 15, 30. 1, 5, 3, 0. Now you see there is a significant difference. You have a different number? No, I have a question. Uh -huh. 
there is a significant difference between these two. Remember, every time that you implement one iteration, you improve the solution. This is a minimization problem. So when you start with this, the next step, you improve it. But you go from 2150 to 2000. And then you do another iteration, and you go to 1800. And then you do another iteration, and you go to 1600. And then you do another iteration, you, you get to this. And you say, so, so this is going to save you a lot in time. You spend, that was pretty easy. It can be done in, I don't know, five minutes. This can be done in seven or eight minutes. But it saves you hours in implementing the solution. So you say, well, if I can spend a little bit more time and get, better, get a better solution, let me do that. And then people come up and say, is there a more intelligent way that you can implement to get a better solution even? And somebody by the name of Vogel came with that answer. So there is a Vogel's method that would allow you to find a basic feasible solution which is often better than this. Again, how much time? Five minutes. How much time? Eight minutes. How much time? Twelve minutes. So the balance is at that. You do more work to get a better starting basic feasible solution. And when you see the actual algorithm, you say this worth that four additional minutes or five additional minutes worth doing the work such that I can get a better solution. Okay, how is Vogel's working? Vogel works based on the concept of the penalty. The way that we looked at Northwest Corner was that, was to satisfy the demands using our supplies. We didn't care about the cost. In minimum cost method, we brought the issue of the cost into the consideration. We said that we are going to satisfy the demand using our supplies what we will assign to the minimum cost. In Vogel, we are saying, what is the penalty if I don't assign to this minimum? What is the penalty if I don't assign something to a specific cell? And, and as such, we are going to calculate the penalty for each row and each column based on the two smallest numbers that I see on those rows or columns. And in this case, this is what I am going to be doing. I will look at, for example, column one. Let's do it all together. I'll look at column one, and I say, what are the two smallest numbers in that column? In this column, there is a three here, there is another three here. The concept is this. What is the penalty if I don't assign to that three? There is no penalty because there is another three in this column too. So you subtract the two smallest numbers that are available on that column. So you would write a penalty in here and subtract 3 minus 3. The penalty is 0.
and then you assign another penalty. I mean, you can write these things at the top if you have, I don't have, let's, let's write them at the top. <coughs> so we don't get them mixed up with this. So it's, the penalty is zero. What about the second column? There's a two, there is a four. So penalty is two. On the third column. One. Um, erase these numbers. On the third column, six and five, it's one. It's four and seven, it is three. So again, for example, if I had a choice between these three columns, which one would I assign first? The one had that has the biggest penalty. Because if I don't assign that, the consequences are larger than the other one. If I don't assign it here, there's another one that has the same number. If I don't assign it here, there is another one, two more dollars per unit. I don't assign it here, there's one with one more dollar difference. But then here there is three. So what about that one? What about that column? Okay. So this one is one. This one is four and four zero. This one is six and three is three. Now these are the penalties. They have nothing to do with the supply or demand. This is the penalty of not assigning that minimum on that column. And we will do the same thing for the rows. And I'm going to write it in here, not to get mixed up with the other one. So I'll look in here, and there is a 2 and there is a 3. So penalty is 1. In here, I have a 5 and a 6. Penalty is 1. In here, I have a 1 and 3 is 2. In here, I have a 2 and... 5, which is 3. In here I have a 3 and 4, which is, there's a, well, oh, there's a 3 in here. That's, okay. So this is 0. And then I would say, OK, which one of them should I assign based on these facts? What is that I need to assign? I said, what the one that has the most penalty? The one that has most penalty. And I say, there is a 3 in here, and there is a 3 in here. Arbitrary, choose whatever you want. Which one would you like to choose? Well, let's go with the column. It's three, three. It's three, three. There are three threes. Okay, so our job is even more. <laughs> Which one should I choose? Well, let's, let's choose whatever you like. Let's, let's, let's randomly go this one. <laughs> Okay, so we will select that. We will select that. Um, and we will assign the value. We are selecting that, and we will look at this column, and this is the minimum. So I'm going to assign between 30 and 50, 30 units, 
This is going to go to 20, and this is going to go to 0. As I satisfied the row, I'm going to erase that, eliminate that row from consideration. Now, when I eliminate that row, does it impact the penalty of this row? No, because the penalty of this row had nothing to do with this row. This one? No. This one? No. No? So what is being impacted are the columns. When a row is eliminated, you have to update the column penalties. So I will be looking at this column, and I say, OK, this tree is gone. It's no longer there. So what is the penalty now? It's 3 and 6. So this is going to go to 3. Uh, so 2 and 4 remains at 2. Five and six remains at one. Seven and eight. That that was eight? Yeah. Is that eight? Okay. Seven and eight. This is updated to one. So penalties doesn't have to go up, they can go down. They can go up, they can go down. You just update them. Row is eliminated. We update the column penalties. Mm -hmm. This one, 1 and 2 is still 1. This one, 4 is eliminated. So the next one, 4 and 5, is 1. This one, 3 and 6, is still 3. Again, we are going to assign values. So we will be looking at, there is a 3 here, there is a 3 here, and there is a 3 here. Again, arbitrarily, we are going to choose between them, and this is going to be <laughs> this one. <laughs> it's going to be that one. So. I'm going to assign something in this row to the minimum. And the minimum is this number. So I'm going to assign that is 30 and that is 70. So I'm assigning 30 in here, this one to 0, and that one to 40. The column is satisfied, so I'm going to erase the column. When the column is eliminated, I have to update which penalty? The row penalties. I thought we were choosing the column with the greatest penalty and the row with the least, with the lowest penalty. The penalty. We are choosing between with the largest penalty. Largest penalty, least cost. You assign it to that. That's why we assign it. So the first one we chose. Mm -hmm. It was a three. We didn't choose zero. No, you chose. You chose, chose we three. chose that three. Right. And when we assigned, it happened that the row was eliminated. We chose that 3 and that 0. That no, that 0 that's not, was not in consideration. The 0. We didn't choose it based on the 0. We chose it based on that 3. 
we assign the value 30 and 50, and because 30 went to zero, I had to eliminate the row. So I'm saying, so you chose, you looked at, three, you considered three and then four? Right. Okay. You're saying four. The what cost, did, what, what the, did, cost, the cost was the smallest cost in that. Yes, for the first one. Yes, for the first one. So now that the column is eliminated, I have to update my row penalties. Okay. Let's go in here. It remains the same. Two and three are still here. In here, five and six are still here, so that's one. In here, in here, something is going to change. Three and four. One is gone. So three and four is going to be one. So this is updated to one. Next one, two is gone. So it ends up with five and six. This is going to go to one. What about that? It's already eliminated from consideration. It's a, it's a it's a three step process. Perfect. Number one, you pick the largest penalty. Right. So why do we choose one? It's no, we already eliminated. That's the second round. You gotta update your penalties. We didn't choose one. We chose three. So are we chose choosing the largest penalty? Number one. You chose you choose the largest penalty. And the column after you choose the largest penalty. That largest penalty belongs either to a row or a column. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Then you do not consider anything else except that row or column. Then you go into the row and column. After that point, penalty is gone. You go into that row and column and say, what is the minimum number? You find that minimum number. And then you say, how much can I assign? You assign, and then you say, OK, what got eliminated? They have nothing to do with the penalties from that point on. Penalties are just for the selection. From that point, penalties are out of the door until we update them. OK, have you updated them? or? We have updated them. So now we have one, 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 three, two, one, 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 and three. Ah, there are again two threes in here. So we are going to do another arbitrary selection, and it happens to be this one. So arbitrarily, we selected that. From this point, penalty is gone out of the door. Now I have selected this column. Inside this column, I'm going to be looking at the minimum number. Okay? And of course, minimum number is, so the minimum number is that three. Do am I looking at the penalties at all? No. No, I'm looking at this column. Six, nine, three, ten. This is no longer in consideration. So three is the minimum. Okay. Now what do I look? How much I can assign? There is a hundred there, there is a forty in here. I'm assigning forty. Now I go forty. Which one should I eliminate? This one or that one? This is column. Does it have to do anything with the penalty? No. no. It's because which one of them went to zero? And this went to 
60. So this column is being eliminated not because we selected the penalty for it, but because, because of this selection. Okay, now we have to now, column is eliminated, we need to update the row penalties. Does it change? Does this one change? Six was not a factor in selecting that one. Um, nine wasn't a factor. What was that? Five and six. One, three is gone. Okay, so four and five, you need to do this to make sure that you are updating them. This one, this one, no change, and that's it. Then we go there and said one, 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 three, two, one, one, and, and, and another one. So in this case, the option is clear. So we are going with this column. From this point, no consideration of the penalty. We have selected the column. We look at three and seven and six, three and three and seven and six, and this is not considered anymore. So why we're going to assign a value to this. How much I can assign? 40 and 20. So this is the 20 assignment. This is going to zero. This has gone to 20. And what is eliminated? Column. Column is eliminated. So I have to do the row penalties again. This three is gone. Remaining is two, six, and four, and seven. Two and four. This goes to two. In this case, five and six are still there, so this one. In, in this case, four and five are there, so it's a still one. In this case, six is gone, so it's five, nine, 12, and eight. So this is three. Selection is obvious. This is the selection. You go based on the largest penalty, and then you say 5, 9, 12, and 8. The minimum is here. How much can I assign? 80 and 40, so I will assign 40. I will assign 40. This becomes 40. This becomes 0. So this row is now gone. I'm going to update the column penalty. So it's no longer here. Two and four is two. Six and no, six and five is one. Okay. And this one is twelve, so seven and eight is one. And this one was eight. Four and five is one. So now we have one, 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 two, and this is gone. We have two twos. So still we need to go and do a, this is thingy, where did I stop here? So we will assign. Right here, it happens to be both of them at the same point. Couldn't be better. Um, So 40 and 20, we will assign 20. We'll assign 20. This will go to 20. This will go to 0. The row is eliminated. The row is eliminated. We are updating the column penalties. Remaining in here are these two. That has become 5. These two is 1. These two is two, and these two is two. Five, of course, is the largest. We are going to select that column, 
between these two. And what five means is this. If you don't assign in here, you're going to burn by $5 per unit. So you better assign here. And then you say, no, 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 no. I want to assign it in, in here. I like one. You say, yeah, but take my word for it. This is better. So you go in here, you assign this value. How much? 60 and 20. Well, assign 20. This is going to 0. This is to 40. Oh, OK. Well, we are, we're done. We're done. We'll finish that. You finish that yourself. There's a couple more that you need to just to do the finish. And then you get the Z. And then you get the Z value, and that's another solution. And compare that solution with these two. Okay?